Quest. We're now going to start dealing with the last of the artistic proofs. Remember, there are inartistic and artistic proofs, and those are both part of the canon of invention, which is one of the five canons of rhetoric. Okay, the five canons of rhetoric are invention, style, arrangement, memory, and delivery. Invention has artistic and inartistic proofs. Our inartistic proofs are like our research. Our artistic proofs are our logos, which is our logic, our pathos, which is our emotion, and our ethos, which is our character. And that's what we're talking about today. Character is really important in a speech. In fact, Aristotle said that he thought that no one would ever believe a speech unless the audience first believed that the speaker had goodwill towards the audience, that the speaker actually wanted what was best for the audience. It's an especially important idea here in our culture, in the United States. The First Amendment to our Constitution, that is, the first change that people made to the Constitution after it was written. See, the, the Constitution was written in 1787. The First Amendment didn't go into effect until 1791. That's several years later. That First Amendment, that first change, was to guarantee that we would have our freedom of speech. The First Amendment says that Congress can make no law regarding the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or prohibiting the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the people to peaceably assemble, or to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This freedom to speak is important, and it gives us all kinds of rights. But, uh, Potter Stewart, the 92nd Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court, made an important point. He said that ethics, character, is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. Our communication is more effective if we speak ethically. One famous writer on the subject, Marcus Quintilian, said, for I do not merely assert that the ideal orator should be a good man, but I affirm that no man can be an orator unless he is a good man. For it is impossible to regard those men as gifted with intelligence, who on being, the choice, being offered the choice between the paths of virtue and of vice, choose the latter. Nor can we allow them prudence, when by the unforeseen issue of their own actions, they render themselves liable, not merely to the heaviest penalties of the law, but to the inevitable torment of an evil conscience. See, Quintilian's saying that you can't be a good speaker unless you're an ethical speaker. Now, you'll hear people who will disagree with that. Every now and then you'll hear somebody say, Oh, well, you know that Adolf Hitler? He was a bad man, but a good speaker. Quintilian would disagree with that, and so do I. Quintilian would disagree, and so do I, because of this. Think about it. Lots of people read Mein Kampf in history classes and in schools. Mein Kampf was the book written by Hitler where he outlined his arguments and his ideas. And when they read them now, they look at it and they say, wow, that dude was messed up. See, it's possible, if you're an unethical person, that you can get away from with it for a while. What is it that Abraham Lincoln said? You can fool fool some of the people all the time, all the people some of the time, but you can't fool fool all the people all the time? Yeah, you're going to get caught. You speak unethically. You're going to get caught. And when people read your stuff later, they're gonna, people see it later, they're going to say, man, that person was messed up. So how can we speak ethically? Well, one argument that can be made is that we can, we can change our habits. Our habits in speaking to involve these three habits. First is the habit of search. The habit of search is to speak knowledgeably and, com 
and, and confidently. How can you be confident in what you're saying? Well, because you do your research and you figure it out and you make sure that the stuff you're saying is really the stuff that's true. Another habit to develop is the habit of justice. Selecting facts and opinions openly and fairly. Way too often these days, a person gets their news or gets their information from a source with which they already agree. If you do that, you are an unethical person. An ethical person goes ahead and looks at other sides of the opinions, tries to take in all the points of view, and maybe they change their point of view and maybe they don't, and maybe they listen to their own point of view and think it makes more sense than when they go listen to somebody else's point of view, but they still listen to somebody else's point of view. And when they come out and they share their information, they share both sides of the story. That's the habit of justice. And also a habit of preferring public motivation over private motivation. It'd be pretty funny if I got up and gave a speech about how college professors need to make more money. I think if I were to do that, people would say, you know what? He's got another agenda. He wants more money for him. Even, even if that wouldn't be the reason I'd do it. So people would think. So you need to stay away from that. If your speech benefits you more than it benefits the, the audience, really, maybe you should talk about another subject. It's important that you speak ethically. It's important that you understand the power of the podium. See, when you give your speeches, that might be the only time your audience is ever able to learn about the subject. You need to speak truthfully. You need to know your facts. You need to use credible sources and current information. Now you're saying, current information. Well, Dr. Clyde, I've been watching your videos for a while now. You cite a lot of sources more than 2,000 years old. And it's true, I do. But those sources are not out of date. Some sources, I quote Aristotle when he's talking about speech, but I don't quote him on biology. He was wrong on that subject in most cases. Try to avoid purposeful ambiguity. That means saying things in such a way that people aren't really sure what you said. Being wishy-washy. Try to avoid rumors and in innuendo. Be willing to rock the boat if you have real legitimate information that changes minds. And be clear in your motives. Why are you telling people this? And while it is important to have emotional appeals, your emotional arguments need to be backed up by logic or you are not being ethical and you'll eventually be found out. We've covered invention now. We've covered the inartistic proofs. We've talked about how you can go about getting research and how you can evaluate it. We've talked about the artistic proofs. We covered logic. We covered emotion. And now we've talked about ethics. As we go on, we're going to talk about the other canons of rhetoric. See, we've covered delivery and invention, but we've still got style, arrangement, and memory to go. So I look forward to seeing you for several more videos. Thank you very much for